Hey everyone, Duke here, and today we're going over a few tips for the master version of Ghosts of the Deep. This dungeon has been out for a few weeks now, and with the cheese being fixed, I thought now was a good time to talk about it, so let's do it. To start, there's a couple differences throughout the entire dungeon. First, the master version is at 1840 power throughout the entire dungeon, with a cap of 1820. This means that you'll be forced to be a minimum of 20 power below the enemies at all times, but also means that as long as you are at least 1820 power, you will be as effective as is possible for the dungeon. The positive is this allows for there to be a much lower grind and barrier to entry than previous to this change, along with everyone being on the same playing field in this high-end content. The negative is, of course, that you're going to be 20 below and there's nothing you can do about it. However, there are a couple things that you can do to make things just a little bit easier. First, I'd recommend 100 Resilience. This is just free survivability, which is always key for high-end content. Along with Resilience, using chess piece mods like Arc Resist and Concussive Dampener are going to give you even more survivability. Don't forget that each encounter will have a raid flag at the start too, so you can and should use the rally flag trick where you swap to a separate chess piece with reserves, rally, and then switch to your quote-unquote survival chess piece, giving you the best of both worlds with high survivability and more ammo. Now on the damage side, we want to try to make use of the current surges. There's always going to be two damage bonus surges, which give any damage of that type a 25% damage bonus. Overcharged weapons are also active, which means that any seasonal champion stun weapons will additionally get that 25% damage bonus, along with weapons that may be specified in a seasonal perk, with this season being the weapons listed in the overcharged armory perk. Do note that these things don't stack, so you can't use like an overcharged weapon and a surge weapon and get 50% damage. You just get one or the other, you get 25% as your max total damage bonus. For the first encounter, really the only change is that the ogres are unstoppable champions. Bring an unstoppable weapon of your choice for the current season and you'll be good. Do note that the 20 level difference will make things tankier and more threatening in general, especially the moths and lucent hive, so you're going to want to play a bit slower and safer than normal, but that's true of the entire dungeon as a whole. For Ekthar, the knights will now have arc shields, while the ogre will once again be unstoppable, so make sure that at least one if not two people here have the ability to stun it. Strand subclasses or a chill clip fusion rifle can both be strong ways to deal with the unstop while still having the ability to be used for strong ad clear as well. Double special is extremely good for both boss encounters in this dungeon as it allows for a strong ad clear with something like forbearance along with the additional heavy ammo drops you receive when running double special. As the runner, I ran Arbalist to quickly take the boss's shield down during DPS phases, but the non-runners will want something like a fusion or trace rifle to assist more with ad clear, as just like in the normal version, the adds can be hectic, but now they're tankier and doing more damage as well. As for DPS itself, whatever you're used to running on normal should be fine, with things like swords, rockets, and Legend of Acreus all being potentially strong options. Just remember to check on the current surges and match your heavy to one of them, if at all possible, to get that free 25% damage bonus. For the final boss, all of the boomer knights on the outskirts of the map are now barrier champions. Taking these down to start the encounter is going to be your best bet, as they don't respawn until the next phase. One person on Aeons with the Sect of Insight mod is going to allow for your teammates to get plenty of heavy, while once again running double special will allow for even more heavy drops. I would recommend one of those special weapons be a trace rifle, especially for this encounter, as you can pretty much use it as a primary type weapon, and they're also very good for taking down the moss, which you're going to want to be able to deal with. Having Arbalist on one player will once again be extremely useful for its ability to break the boss's shields quickly for damage phase. For DPS itself, one person on Galahorn while the other two use surge specific tracking rockets has been my go-to strategy. It is very important to have that tracking module perk on your legendary rockets for this encounter though, as missing rockets can and will be quite impactful. Linear fusion rifles are an additional option if you don't have tracking rockets or just don't like them, with the option for one player on Divinity as well to help hit consistent crits. This also opens up the option for a Warlock to run the Divinity with Cenotaph Mask instead of having an Aeons user on the team. And do note that actually Cenotaph Mask can be an option anyway if using any Trace Rifle as a Warlock. I've also heard good things about Leviathan's Breath, especially with Void Surge, but I'm just not a fan of how that weapon fires, so I have no first-hand experience using it. Also, just a general tip that the moss in this encounter respawn every time that Vorlog does, so use this information to your advantage. 
Whenever you kill Vorlog, look to where the boss is and take these moss down right away, and if you can't, just run away a bit and then turn back around to continue taking the moss down. I've heard a lot of talk about how threatening these moss are, but I feel like knowing this specific information and the specific spawn makes the moss a complete and total non-factor for the entirety of this encounter as long as you are paying attention and make sure to check for them each time. I hope this guide helps you complete the master version of Ghost of the Deep and shows that it's still very doable even with the cheese being patched. And as always, thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day.